Hey guys, welcome to the Scholar Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning, okay? So before we get into today's video, let's just get through the admin part of it. Remember to like this video that you're watching because it supposedly helps with the Google um, algorithm and uh, of course open the description of the video that you're watching over there by just clicking on it and i will try and put in as much information in there to help you through the video so if you hear me say i'm going to link it in the description below that's where you're going to find the link all right so go through that and read a little bit more about what this video is all about and i'll see if there's a need for timestamps but if it's long videos we will include the timestamps in there as well and of course you can get access to our social channels and a lot of my contact information all right remember to also subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so that you are notified every time that we release a new video and you are not left behind all right so let's get started with a today's video so today we are finally going to be talking about gemini gemini is the new ai model created by google to sort of try and match or to match chat gpt and open ai and it's got a lot of the functionalities and features that you would get out of the open ai models and today with you guys for the first time i'm going to give gemini a try i think bard wasn't even worth creating a video over when they created it and i'm so glad that google went back to the playing board and rethought about this if they really wanted to compete with open ai to do something that is really going to be on the level and on the standard and something that developers can use because what open ai did was they didn't just create a platform for people to go online and uh, a chat with an ai they created an entire system for even developers to build applications and developers to be able to be creative and and and, and work on what can we use ai to solve real world problems right so that is what made open ai big and and how open ai grew was the developers themselves because they built products the community around it promoted and grew it because everybody had something in it i built an app and i wanted to grow it and so forth so i think uh, google went back to the drawing board and tried to do something similar where now they put out an api that we can all use and have documentation that can be easy to follow and we can try and build applications around it although um i did stop trying to build an application at a point and i'll let you know when that point is and you will see it as you are working with me on this video so let's get started we're gonna first of all go through what is available online on their documentation i'm gonna go to their playground sort of um and play around with the model a little bit and then we're gonna try and build something and we're gonna try and do it all in this one tutorial and let's see how far we get okay so on your you know how we do about videos guys this is not a movie that you're gonna sit back and watch you're gonna pull out your laptops and you're gonna work with me as we go along all right so pull out your laptop and open um chrome and go to this website over here all right it says ai.google.dev and the nice thing about open ai i suppose is you know you are already i mean the nice thing about google is that you can access it from your gmail account all right so you just need to have your gmail active and you can log in using that so let's let's get started so go to ai.google.dev slash docs okay i'll put this link in the description of the video as well and you can get to it so this is where we're going to get started if you look at the documentation it's structured in this format right and this is how most google documentation is structured you've got the docs you've got the pricing and you've got the api reference and it's important to understand the differences the docs generally just write out what you need to know and how everything works all right and the api reference is actual references that you can use when you're working on the api to be able to build certain things so today we're going to focus just on the docs we're going to build um on the docs and perhaps we're going to look a little bit on the pricing because i think it's important when you build with these models to understand how much it costs costs to work on it uh, and so forth so i'll open up the pricing a little bit later and this is pretty much where i got stuck right so <laughs> you'll see that um when you go into the into the into the open air the it's free to use right so it's not really expensive right um you um can use it you can get started with me right now and use it and you can get 60 queries per minute without paying anything and that's enough for you to build and test an application it's not going to be enough for a production application but it's going to be enough for you and what we're doing in this tutorial without paying a single cent so that's a nice thing about it is that they allow you to get started for free and then when you start having more and more queries then you need to start paying uh, per 
you know, per, per, per thousand characters. And this is where OpenAI is right now. Because I think with OpenAI, you went straight to pay as you go, but the pricing was slightly different. So I'll have a look at this pricing and see, right? I think from the top of my head, this is cheaper than OpenAI pricing, but I'm going to just like um, try and open OpenAI in here. Open AI pricing and then just compare, you know, apples with apples. Open AI. There you go. Let's just compare apples with apples and let's compare this with GPT 4, right? Because this is the, there is, um, there are two models on, on, on Gemini, the, the, the big models that are, that are currently, um, you know, and we'll go through it as we go through the tutorial, but I just wanted to, to know, um, there is the Gemini Pro uh, model and then there is the Gemini Pro Vision model. So they've got the vision and the normal text generation and you can use a text generation just for text and the vision one for text and image, the multimodal model. So I think the pricing here, I'm, I'm seeing just the pro version because I don't see the image uh, thing. So we'll compare this with GPT-4, normal GPT-4. So you can see the input price here is not per not three per thousand tokens. And the input price here is not per not, not one, two, five per thousand characters. So this is by far way, way cheaper. I think this is almost in line with the GPT 3.5 prices, because if you look at GPT 3.5 turbo prices, you're getting at not per not, not, not five. All right. So this is not point, uh, not, not, not one, two, five for input. And this is the input. All right. And then, um, so this is slightly still cheaper than 3P, GPT 3.5. But the last time I checked, you had to go through a waiting list and wait to, and it's still coming soon. So it's not even available right now. And you had to apply and get your app through an approval process to get to the increased limits. All right. So I couldn't get to it at the time, but I think if you can get to it and the performance is slightly better from the way look things pricing a point of view, it looks like the Gemini. And I stand corrected. It looks like the Gemini is going to be cheaper than a GPT 3.5. Definitely, it is cheaper than GPT 4. So let's now look at performance and we'll try and compare the two. Hence, I have my GPT 4 open here and we're going to work with it. So when you get started over here and you go and you go to the website, you'll see right at the top, there's a link, there's a, there's a, um, there's a link to the J to Gemini there. This will take you to the Gemini sort of, um, this is like the, the playground sort of this is like this it's a similar setup to this where you can talk to the models directly on the on the on the interface on the internet without having to deal with code and at least get a capability of how a model works and i haven't tried it so i'm, I'm doing this with you for the first time here so let me click on it oh oh let me go back uh let me let me rather I click open on a new window so that i have this window um here all right so there it is. You can see the website looks very, very snazzy. And when you have time, definitely go and read through it. And you can see, um, you know, um, whatever, the, you know, uh, this is a video from the from their CEO, uh, Gemini 3.5 and the tokens. And, the, and, the, and if you understand models, you can go through a lot of the details. But I'm more interested in because I, I hardly ever go reach the limits. And, and I don't really care for the science, to be honest. I just care that it works. And I care that it, 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 it fits into my applications that I'm building and more importantly, what costs me less and what can I get more out of? All right. So we're going to go straight into chat with Gemini and I think you need to log in here. All right. So when you, when you click there, um, let's click chat with Gemini and then you're going to need to accept the terms and conditions over here. So read those terms and conditions in great detail, specifically the fine print, and then you can agree to them. And then once you've done that, you can see you've got an option here for, uh, please remember, um, this is just normal disclaimers. You don't always get it right. You know this, this is an AI model. It is approximations. You can't take it for science. You have to just understand that it is what it is. And we're going to say continue without opting in for uh, news. And just like that, we are logged in. All right. So you can see this interface is pretty similar to the interface of ChatGPT over there. This is where you're going to, type in your prompt all right and you're gonna you know and it also takes in a microphone so it also takes in like a um yeah like i can talk to it let me try okay so i need to allow my microphone first so let's do that hi how are you doing today <laughs> all 
all right cool um so i think i it, it sort of got some other stuff but but i like this right so you can um you can talk to it um so this i think helps people that you know um that perhaps want, want to sort of you know those voice notes type people you know you can come in and have your you know your that then let, let's let's just like general questions i like to ask um uh, chat gpt you know what is what is bitcoin um explain it like i am a two-year-old initial thoughts using this high level initial thoughts it is a little bit slower than gpt 3.5 it is about the same speed as gpt 4 and it's not streaming the response so it's taking a bit longer because i think it's getting the entire response before it puts it out um imagine you have a special internet and it's still very much into those bullet points if you remember how when ChatGPT started initially it always used to give you a response in you know i'll give you an example i'm gonna put this exact thing um i'm not gonna edit it i'm just gonna copy it and i'm gonna put it on let's let's go to the gpt 3.5 all right because that's an older one you'll see how much quicker gpt 3.5 is right and what i what, what i what i'm what i mean when i say these responses with the bullet points right is initially i mean i'm a developer so i've been with chat gpt for a while the way the models were created and if you use llama as well it, it still has the same type of output and this is actually a more crude output where it tries to explain the the solution and then it gives you the points and then it gives you a conclusion right so it, it has this sort of like structure that it, it uses for them for the for the responses and this is not always practical because i'm saying explain it to me like i'm a two-year-old the last thing i want is bullet points and, a, and an introduction and a conclusion you see so in my mind very high level i can already tell you this is still a little bit crude right so if i was building a chatbot and i wanted a chatbot and i already gave it instructions explain it to me like i'm a two-year-old the last thing i want is a very very long response with bullet points but you can see chat definitely has advanced because it used to be like this when it started and you can see they've iterated and they've, they've, they've changed it. So when I say explain it to me like a two-year-old, it's actually just going to give me an answer. It's not going to go and start with an introduction and bullet points and a conclusion, right? It's going to just give me an answer and it's going to really treat me like I'm a two-year-old and that really... So, so definitely maturity-wise, I would say they're still a little bit behind, but I'm sure they're going to, um, to, to, to grow on that. But I'm still loving the pricing of it. And, and definitely it's worth a try and there's going to be a lot of use cases, right? Um, and then another most common thing that I like to use to test out some of these things are, um, what is it? Um, um, give me some high level, some high level blog uh, topics for a CRM website, website, SaaS platform. And I'm going to take the exact same thing and I'm going to give it this side, but let's, let's, let's put it there as well. So it does take a bit of time to respond. Um, and there you go. Oh, there you go. Lovely, lovely. And it still streams the responses. I thought it wasn't streaming them, but it is. You can see that it's streaming. Um, they're coming. Um, and it's also very detailed. And this is another thing with GPT-4 doesn't do gpt4 has got this term called laziness um chat gpt where it just sort of like it gives you the absolute minimum responses to everything like like even when you tell it please be um you know like I, like when you're trying to write a full blog for example and you say please write me a blog about this it's going to give you like like just sentences and, 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 and you know, it'll give you a title and a sentence and a title and a sentence and it'll give you like a one page and like a half of a page. And I'll be like, no, please expand and give me, you know, more information. I want you to really write the introduction. It's almost like you need to write it in section. It doesn't really just want, it doesn't want to do it. But when you um, go into the details and you, and you, and you prompt better and you, and you actually write the blog in sections, you get really great responses. But let me see how this does because I'm already seeing it, um, you know, giving me a whole lot of content from one question, which you hardly ever get with chat GPT. You always get short answers and, and it's great for chatting, right? But it's not nice for content creation. So you need almost a balance. And I think, you know, OpenAI should give us the functionality to be able to decide whether I want, I want a long output or I want a short one, you know? So this is great for chatbot, but it's not great for content creation. 
right so i'm going to ask it the same the same question please give me some high level and you'll see you know very very you know 10 question you know 10 um uh titles and that's it right and look at the response you get out of here it's definitely more detailed and it gave you more you know it gave you a general um strategy type block types and industry specific thought leadership and trends pro tips so you get more out of gemina and i like that especially for some of my blog writing right so I'm going to test this, what I'm telling you, right? Getting your team on, but I'm going to pick this random topic and I'm going to say, write me a blog with this topic, right? Write me a blog with this topic and see what it's going to do, right? Um, dish, dish, dish. Why is adoption important? Da, 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 da. And it's, it's quite detailed, right? It's not really where I want, I mean, it's, it's this is not a blog right but but i like the fact that it's still got more information out of it and i and if you try the same with chat gpt you will see you'll get like even less responses so i'm not even going to do that but i think i've done enough to demonstrate this is the gemini web version okay and it's it works with chat gpt and personally i i like the let me see here you can so you can choose you can choose the different one. So you got the normal Gemini and then you got Gemini Advanced, which you need to upgrade. So I suppose this is your chat GPT and GPT Plus. <laughs> but um, yeah, so what I want now is actually, um, I don't want to chat with Gemini. I want to get the API key because I want to work through some of the examples which they have over there, right? So um, we started, remember, um, on the welcome part of it, right? So I'm going to go into the overview right and into the overview you can see all the different tutorials there's a python go node.js web flutter you, we're gonna try a lot of these as much as possible of course i don't code in all of these languages i'm a i'm a python specialist but i'm gonna try and be very generic this time and build something that 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 a lot of us can work with so when you go onto python um i want to actually um get the link for getting the api key which was all over the place just now. Um, dush, dush. Let's see, Google AI Studio. So Google AI Studio is different from the Gemini chat chatbot, right? So this Gemini chatbot this is similar to your chat gpt it's for people that want to just chat to the thing on the front end load an image i think you can load an image ask about an image you can um use the microphone i see they don't have functionality to add documents yet so they're still slightly a little bit behind chat GPT, but you can expect them to be on the same level to be honest and i haven't seen some of these options here you can copy uh, you can report. What does this do? Double check the response, share, modify, and give feedback. All right. So this is similar to the chat GPT. This, the, the Google, the Gemini AI studio is more like, um, platform.api.openai.com, right? If you've been to platform.openai.com, okay, I haven't logged in, but you can come in here and you can log in. You'll see the documentation and, and references, but you'll see like, um, you'll be able to go um, and see your API keys and you'll be able to go and do a whole lot of other things that you can't really do on, on chat GPT. This is just a chat interface, but this is where you can interact with OpenAI models, see all the models that are there, get your API keys. You can even, you know, work with assistants and all sorts of other things that are, that are, that you can do here that you don't have there. So it depends on what you're looking for. So, well, so we're going to go and have a look at, the you know the the studio and once you get started of course there's um you can use the studio to work or you can get an api key so from the from the start you're given these two options i'm gonna start with trying to get an api key all right and before i can get an api key of course i have to read through a whole lot of terms and conditions and accept them all right so i consent to the um generative additional terms and conditions of google da, 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 and knowledge that i have read the privacy policy is i'd like to receive emails about updates nope i'd like to participate no i don't want to receive emails 
all right so here are the api keys right so let's see so you, you you're gonna get um um let me create the key right here i will copy it and um, i don't have a project so i'm creating an api key in a new project don't worry i will show this key but i will also delete it when i'm done but like i said there's limits and this um so Please don't mess up with my API key if I haven't gotten to deleting it yet. I know you guys are nice people. So I'm going to uh, copy this API key and I'm just going to find somewhere nice to put it. Maybe over here at the bottom of this code that we're going to go through a little bit later. Um, let me paste it there. All right. That's the API key. That's what I wanted. All right. And remember the API key is shown on your one. So when you get it, you need to copy it and put it in a safe place because you won't get to see it again, all right? So let me refresh this and um, I should see that I've created one. There it is. Um, and then I'll be able to come back here and delete it. Oh, this is really cool. So already you can see they um giving you code to already use this to um, use the API key. Okay, but we're not gonna work with this. We're gonna work through the documentation, all right? So let's go back to the documentation. And then go back to um, docs and, and then go to um, just the menu over there. You'll see there's different quick starts, all right? There's a REST API quick start, which we can work with, which we can test quickly because anybody can work on a REST API. So let's check the REST API quick start. Um, oh, actually, no, let's not do that yet because you need to, yeah, no, let's not do the REST API quick start yet. Actually, we can. We can use, I think this is why I have Postman over here. Yeah, so Postman is a uh, an application that you can use to test APIs very, very quickly without having to write code specific, um, you know. So if you go to um, online on the internet and you just look for Postman uh, download, um, download, you can work with Postman in two ways, right? You can go to Postman and you can work directly off Postman off the internet. So you can sign in here and you can immediately work with Postman off the internet. Otherwise, what you can do is that you can download the app and then it can sit in your computer, right? And then you don't have to go to the internet. And that's what I've done. You can see this is the app itself, the Postman application. I think mine is a little bit old. I probably need to up update it. But um, you can download the Postman application and then you can have the Postman application sitting in your computer. And every time you wanna test an API, um, you can just use it. I'm a developer and I work with APIs quite a bit. And many, many times I need to see that an API works. I need to test it out quickly before I write code for it. And I use Postman for that. So with Postman, you can see the way it works. You can come over here and you can choose. It's very, very simple. You can choose whether you want to do a get or a post request. You put in the URL over there, you put in your parameters and you're good to go. All right. So let's look at this code over there. So for us to use Postman, we're going to look at this curl code that has been written and I have to just reorientate myself into reading curl. But if you look at this curl code, you can see there's a couple of uh, levels to it. You'll see it says curl. Then there is an URL over here, all right? So let's copy this URL. This is the URL we're going to need just from the HTTPS until the end of it, all right? So let's find our Postman and then we're going to post that URL over there. Then once we've done that, you'll see, um, um, the, you know, there the are parameters on the, you know, on the URL and those parameters are the key and that key is the API key that you need to put in. So let's just find our API key over there and let's copy it and, and paste it here where it says API key over there. You can paste it over there. Otherwise you can also just paste it directly in the URL. Okay. And then you're good to go. So the URL we've uh, rewritten it properly. And then you'll see that you need to then, um, the headers is a content type JSON, but don't worry. Um, curl handles that for you. You don't have to specify headers yourself. You can skip that. And then it needs to be a post request. So we need to change this from get to post just like that. And once you've done that, you will see the D is the data, the data that needs to be sent on the post request. So for us to do that, we need to go into the body of the request and you, you see here, there's no body when you get started. So you need to pick raw. And after you've picked raw, you need to select JSON. There are different types of uh, data that you can send using Postman, but JSON is the one that we want. And then you'll see there's a space here for you to enter your JSON. So we need to find this. You can see this D starts with this, um, 
uh, where this bracket starts over there and where it ends over there so we need to just copy this whole thing um this whole thing and we can paste that over there right and there's no errors if there was error you would see some underlines some squiggly lines like if i remove this you'll see there's a squiggly line red line over there so postman also helps you to figure out if your code has no errors on it um and after i've pasted it and i don't see any red underlined squiggly lines underneath it means there's no errors but i just want to improve the readability of this code um so that i can see what's going on here so it looks like you need to enter content parts and then you need to put in the text all right so it's contents and it's a list of objects and within the list of objects there are parts so it's another list of objects and then the parts taking a text all right so after you've done that let me actually put this text at the top there so you can see the structure and then um, that's the first list and then that's the, the the closing bracket for the contents and then that's the closing initial closing bracket so it's you send in an object a json object and in that json object it's you have a a, a, a a list called contents and this list is a list of objects and the first object in the um you put it in there in its parts and then in that is another list of objects and you can then put in um the text so this is your prompt okay the prompt or what you want out of the model and you can see over here that what is not uh, obvious is that the gemini pro model has already been selected for you within the url so if you were like wanting to use a different model like i said uh, what's available currently with the api from what i've seen and i stand corrected here is that you can get the gemini pro and you can get the gemini pro version so you can see the model that has been selected for you already is the gemini pro that's what we're going to be using and that's the model that will be used to generate the content and then you can enter your prompt so this prompt can be anything right so let me um say tell me a bit more about um about bitcoin how does it work and where can i get some all right so that's going to be the prompt and then i actually want to time how long it takes to give me a response because i've got uh, i know exactly how most of these models how quick they work and i'll tell you a little bit later but i'm going to uh press send and then i'm going to put my timer on over here all right and um let's just wait and see if there's not going to be an error and if it's going to bring in a response cool so that took about nine seconds on my side on my watch and you can see um let me just make some space over here um so we can see the response you can see this is similar to what ChatGPT does is markdown formatted which means that you need to use some sort of markdown reformatting on unformatting so that you can display this properly you can see these are the this is in bold and these are new lines and so forth and so forth so it helps you at least is a good way of formatting text and then being able to send it via an api and on the other side you can decode it because maybe you want to have some titles subtitles paragraphs sentences bullet points you know to, so that you can structure the information and obviously within a json text there's only so much you can do so these are things just help with formatting of the content and it's the same way chat gpt works as well chat gpt works exactly like this with the markdown formatting so if you can you can sort of like um, what you call it, decode it using a markdown um decoder and then you can display it nicely the way it's intended but that was nine seconds that's pretty decent actually um for a response time i know with with gpt 3.5 you can get back even less than four seconds in some cases but still this is pretty decent uh, response and um so what is bitcoin it's a decentralized i'm not going to go into the details and of course you can ask it anything you want and you can see what the response is hence i don't know if this is great for chatbot functionality hey eh? because you can see the details that it gives you right but I like that because I like that for content creation. So it depends also on the use case and also think around how you prompt it based on the use case that you're going to be using it for. But what I like is that um, it gives you some safety rec ratings as well so that you can, if you're building an application and you wanted to just be sure of what people are asking, because I've, I've seen some of the weirdest things being asked by people on my application. Trust me, people... I just they just out there to waste your tokens and, and just be mean and almost trying to see the limits of the chatbot of how bad can they ask it questions and and, and get responses or, or or game it i don't know but like people are just crazy right you have to have some of these controls in place and test 
the sort of the, the questions people are asking and see, you know, the harm, if it's sexually explicit stuff, if it's not, you know, um, and, and decide if you want to, you know, like if you have, like, for example, an app and you've got terms and conditions and, and maybe it's an I uh, know PG eighteen or whatever you know and and you don't want people to be able to to generate sexual explicit content you can then use this to, to you know to to check the probability of it and then you know and 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 do that because I've had people in my app asking really 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 I can't say it on a YouTube video but like it's ridiculous what people ask some of these chatbots and and you have to have controls in place for that and with that I think um yeah. So what is over here? So they do have citation sources. This is great. This this I don't see on ChatGPT. Hey, this is really cool. So um, Bloom Advisors, Computer Org. This is really really great. I'm actually working through this for the first time, and I didn't I didn't. You don't get this on ChatGPT for sure. I mean I haven't seen it. But this is amazing because if you are building an application and people are doing research on it, it's actually great that you can uh, get your citation sources and it's showing you like from start index 30 to 2 to 1 and you can check the index from 30 to 2 to 1 in the, you know, and then you can even maybe later on highlight it in your application and then maybe link um, certain things so that people that are reading your responses can go back to see where the thing got the, 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 you know, the, 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 the information from. So it's able to link back and you get this with assistance API. I know the assistance API, but assistance API, you get it because you have to input your own content and then it tells you from your own content where it got the information from. And I find that very, very useful within the assistance API, but I've never seen it on the high level chat GPT. This is really, really great. And you can then build, oh my gosh, have you seen this application guys? I'm going to, tell you a little bit um i'm gonna show you paper type per per it's not paper type it's perplexity that's what i'm looking for perplexity is amazing i actually use it quite a bit and i've actually used it i've started to use it to to, to replace chat gpt i mean to replace google search um they mustn't hear me say that because then they're gonna block more of my videos but um uh, perplexity is amazing guys um when you want to search like if you look at the exact same question that we did here right um, um, or, or tell me what is Bitcoin and where can I get some, right? And you put that into perplexity and you can get started immediately without signing up. As you can see, I've done it, right? Look at how it does. Like perplexity is amazing, but I don't know if there's an API for this, but like, I would love to build something with perplexity. This is, is where I go to for my, for my search. I don't even use Google search anymore because it's, it's, it, 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 it compiles the information into a nice, output format for you like and and it was way quicker than do you see how quick this was this was just a few seconds right and it's written for you a report right there's your report and what perplexity does is um there's the link the source link so this is a similar to what um this is trying to do over here in that it's giving you a response and i'm sure if you formatted this it will look something similar to this paragraph there and and then you can you know you could re reformat it to to put the links on where the information is gotten from and i like that about perplexity so so you read what it's saying there and you can see the source links and if you clicked on it for example and open it on a new tab it will take you to where it got that cont that source from so this is a great place to start your internet research and 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 figure it out and and get the source links and then it has some related and you can follow up and you can use this pretty much for free without even paying anything you can of course sign up and upgrade and you can get more you know functionality and even image inputs and things like that if you upload but even the free version the free version is just amazing okay so um, I, I think I'm gonna, I'll do a YouTube video in the future on some of these tools that I found that um, co that are completely changing the landscape of, of, of how we do research and how we actually generate content online. And a lot of them are just like easy to, and free to use like this one. So I like this, 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 this links, this source links, and I'm going to consider, I'm going to find a use case for this as soon as they allow us to have an increased rate limits, because I'm not going to survive with 60 requests per minute on the type of applications I build. That's definitely not going to work until that's increased. I'm going to stay away from this until they figure out how to give us more, more, um, access. Right. So once that is done, 
Um, the last thing I wanted to do, and I don't know how you're doing on time, and maybe let's do this for the next video because I think we're going to run out of time, is I'm going to build, so I've shown you the API version of this and you've seen how this works on the API and specifically using your API key, all right? So I need to just go back to my Gemini, um, not the Gemini, I need to go back to my studio and then I need to just delete my API key, all right? I'll generate a new one for next week's video. So once I've done that, what I wanna, what I'm going to do next week is we're gonna go through some of these code elements, all right? I actually I found this very very interesting the web version because I think a lot of people that are watching this tutorial can follow along, and you don't need to have a virtual private server or anything like that to follow along. You can write this directly off your HTML, and we're gonna taste this on API key, and we're gonna generate some content, and we're gonna do this directly on the browser, and we're gonna build a chatbot. So the chatbot is going to look um very interestingly like this one i thought i would do this in today's video but the video went a little bit longer than i expected but we're going to do a video like this where you're going to talk to it and in the background it's going to be the gemini and it's going to generate responses for us and so forth for now the bot just says the answer is yes whatever you say i says the answer is yes because i just wanted to have a chatbot code first that works and then after that we will um embed it with with an ai model to actually generate a response so i think we'll do this in next week's tutorial so stay tuned and if you think you're interested in building a chatbot like this because you can then embed this on any website um anywhere online uh, and you've seen a lot of these pop-up chatbots right so i'll show you exactly how to build something like this next week's tutorial and we'll do it with gemini in the background okay so um i think the last thing that i want to cover today is let's let me have a quick look at the api reference all right, so the API reference, obviously you have um, Python client and REST. So let's look at the REST and, and, and it shows you all of these uh, endpoints that you can you can work with because some of the, th the reason why you always wanna have a look at the API reference is when you look at documentation, right? Um, let me open API reference in a different window. If you look at documentation, you'll see, for example, the Python example, right? This is the Python example and that's it. You know, they show you how to then uh, decode the markdown and then they show you how to generate some stuff and, and that's it, right? And it shows you the response and we've seen this on now, the you know, we've seen this over here and what the response looks like and everything. But the API reference has got um, on the Python side a lot of the where is it it's got a lot of um so this is the quick start or oh, that's the overview so that's the pattern client so let's do the generative ai chat session it's got a lot of i mean it shows you pretty much within the api everything you can do with it and the documentation generally gives you the minimum the minimum coding you need to do something. So it gives you an introduction and it's almost like a quick start, really an expanded quick start that shows you very high level of few things that you can get done. Whereas the API reference lists all the available API endpoints and gives you examples and tools on how to deal with it. So when you're a developer, you always wanna work with both. Um, I always wanna get started usually with the docs and at least get a simple example working and get familiarized with the api because this is a good way of of chunking it a little bit and having a little bit of a, eat, eat the api a little bit and test it out and and have just this is check some things out and once you have figured it out then you go and go into the into the uh the the the, the reference and look at all the other uh you know embedding um, you know, tuning, fine tuning your models, listing your models, you know, creating a chat session, you know, I'm going to play around with some of these chat sessions. Uh, and maybe, you know, what I, what's nice about a chat session is you can have, you know, you can have a system for recording what it said previously. So it remembers how it has been answering questions and it can guide you based on what it has been saying, you know, so you can have a look at all of it. So it expands the API a little bit more and shows you all the different functionalities and everything that you can do with it. All right. And then the last thing I wanted to cover over here is the examples. Okay. So everything has got examples and um, so you can have a look at some of these examples that have been built. Um, you have something similar with, 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 with chat GPT where you can see some of these examples. Um, and, and examples when I got started were a good way to get started because they show you the application of the API. So what this does over here, so these are levels of doing something. Um, here is a very high, this is 
the beginning, the, the first chunk, you know, the quick start, um, just write code that works, make sure your API key works just fine and things like that. And then you go into the, um, the F, the reference and see all the available endpoints and what is cap what is possible but still that might not be enough because you still don't know really how to apply this api into a real problem so what the examples do is that they you know especially people that build the models because these examples are from the google team these examples are from the people that are working with these models every day they know what they had in mind when they created their endpoints so they now um use them in real life examples in a real use case so you can see a working code Code that has been built for something very very specific and you can see how they applied the API how the API was applied to, a, to an example and and you can see some things because I've learned quite a bit on open AI we've got it in the cookbooks you know the cookbooks I actually read a lot of the cookbooks and I've got a lot of insights on how to work with certain things even though after reading the API that were not so very clear when you go through the cookbooks you can see how they applied the API in an example that makes really really good sense and then you st I know I've used a lot of the examples on my own private code so over here these are similar you can see a semantic retriever so this is your you know, uh, actually, this is the first thing I'm going to explore. This is this is for any language model. This is exactly what you want. The most the most powerful use case is being able to build a chatbot with your own data. So this is going to help you, like, um, you know, build a chatbot with your own data. That's what a semantic retriever is. Um, uh, data of Flutter apps. This is for mobile applications. Um, there's more examples. Um, this is with Python. This is with JavaScript um go node.js i mean there's a lot of interesting lovely examples over here document search with embeddings i think this and this probably go together i'll have a look later on and see maybe i'll do a tutorial in the future all right on all of these i think this is this is this is this is a gold mine but they must do something about so let's go back to the pricing and i want to just check something test something here quickly so if you go to the top and you go back to the pricing um, I just want to see something. Um, so this is the pro free of charge. This has got limitation. So this is coming soon. So this one is not really out yet. The pay as you go. So it's not available. So I, I think what, what we can do in the meantime, what's definitely possible is to test these things out, but I don't see any real life application of this until the pay as you go comes live and you're able to. And, and I'm also curious to see how they're going to be allowing applications and if they're going to change some of their Google practices, because what I loved about open AI, and I think many companies need to, to, to you to, to sort of consider this is they, they there was no red tape. In, in, in being able to access the API and with the rate limits. Of course there was limits, but you know, the limits were, were on like, you know, the monthly revenue they can allow you to use, obviously. So when you get started, you got up to $120, but as you used more and more, they would allow you more and more, you know, and, but also that, that was based on how well you're paying your account and things like that. But what I loved about it was when you created an application on OpenAI, you didn't have to go through, you know, layers and tons of approval processes and oh no and then you must somebody must come and you must create a video of the application i mean what google does is just ridiculous and facebook and all of those other places when you're trying to build an application on their api the hoops they put you through just to get an application approved and then they will decline it for no reason what i love about this was you could just build an application it doesn't mean that there's no controls in place there's actually quite a lot of controls if you pay attention if you try to abuse a lot of that api and you did things that were not allowed you know even they, they are monitoring how you're using it in the background and they're able to block you and if you if you if you're abusing the system but there's no need for them to like you know, take you through an entire interview as if you're interviewing for a visa just to give you an API key. So I hope that Google will learn from that because that's what allowed OpenAI to grow really, really quickly. And um, they need to consider that. Otherwise, they're going to be working and investing money and it's not going to take them anywhere because that is a limitation. It's a bottleneck. It, it blocks a lot of people from using your system and then they end up not using it. And then you wonder why OpenAI grew so quickly, right? So I think I think with that, I'm going to call it a day. And um, so next week, we're going to continue with Gemini. So maybe we're going to start a tutorial series on this. And we're going to continue with Gemini. We're going to try and build some applications within their free limit, you know, windows. And, and we'll see how it goes. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. And remember to subscribe, like this video and the usual stuff.